Lord today. Stay with us. again for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful day he's given us. Thank you, Lord. He's a way maker. I thought a little while ago, I thought I've been asked to do focused prayer. Focused prayer. And I, I'm, God is a way maker. I get up in the living room and walk to the kitchen. I forget why I went there. So, But I'm going to get focused on prayer. I might not be focused on other things. I'm forgetful. But I'm going to be focused on prayer. Would you join me today as we ask the Lord just to sweep over this house? God, we ask your presence would be here right now, Lord, that your anointing would come into this house, Lord, that you would bless the hungry today, God, that souls would be reached, Lord, that you, Lord, would just come down and rain upon us and sweep across this house, Lord, that you would bless the music and you would bless
bless the ministry here today, God. Bless this event of fellowship that we're going to have after service today, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for a beautiful house to worship in, God, and a beautiful day to come and be in your presence, Lord. We ask, Lord, in Jesus' name that you would bless this music team. Worship with them today in Jesus' name. Thank you. In the Bible, Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, Remember the story? Paul and Silas were in prison, and they were singing, and they were praising, and the shackles fell off of them. When they began to praise. So today, you have shackles, you have chains, you have doubt, fear, worry, whatever is chaining you, then praise him. Praise him. It works. It's proven that it works. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus.
If you would like prayer this morning, just step up and we'll, they'll lay hands on you and pray for you. In Jesus' name, there is healing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
across the room and worship with somebody or shake somebody's hand or greet somebody in Jesus name hallelujah make sure you get around to our guest today I'm so thrilled to have our guest with us today Lord if this is your first time at Blackwell we want to make sure you get one of our first time uh, get gifts for our first time visitors today praise the Lord thank you Jesus 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Yeah. Praise God. I worship you. I worship you. covering over the people today, covering of anointing and faithfulness and victory, holiness, power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. the Lord, everyone. Isn't it awesome to be in the house of God? Wonderful. Praise the Lord. He is good. We have um, a couple of baptismal certificates. Real fast. You can maybe be seated. Um, We want to call you up here if you don't mind. And we get your picture again. (laughs) It's something to celebrate, isn't it? We celebrate when there's a new name written down in glory. So we're going to celebrate this. Um, and the first one is Shelly Fairchild. Woo-hoo! I'm going to get a quick picture. If you have not met Shelly, make sure you do. She is the sweetest woman. She is. She's awesome. We actually all went to school together. We didn't know each other real well, but we went. She's a little older than I am. But she's Pastor's age. Still very young grandmother. <laughs> she's Pastor's age. But um, she was on the basketball team and different things at school, so I saw her. And we I think we may have had, I don't know. I played the tr- flute. She played the trumpet. <laughs> anyway, so it's so good to have Shelly part of the, the, the Jesus name, right? Amen. Woo! Her name is written down in glory. All her sin is gone. Thank you, Jesus. And now we also have her daughter was baptized, Amanda Harris. And she is a doll as well. You will want to meet them if you have not. We have Bible studies every Friday night at our house. They bring their own food. (laughs) They bring dinner and, and, and snacks and dessert. They are wonderful ladies. You'll want to meet them. Make sure you do. And we're so thankful today that Scott, her other son, has come today. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have him here today. Praise God. Praise God. And we're glad to have Andy here today. Praise the Lord. A friend from their neighborhood. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. We gleefully and thankfully and excitedly give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's bountifully blessed us today. Thank you, Jesus. I, how about you two young ladies come up here and take off for today? Praise the Lord. Praise God. They're going to come to you. Praise the Lord. Let's prepare our offering. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to be able to give. We've been blessed. And we pray, Lord, that your anointing and favor would rest on every household. Lord, that you would bring Uh, abundance and victory and strength and you would make a way where there seems no way. Lord, I know that you can do great things and I trust you today to intercede on the behalf of anyone, Lord, that is troubled today. Lord, and I pray that the blessing will rest in the homes of God and the faithful in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Ghost bless you today. So thankful.
Aren't you thankful he's yours today? I'm so glad that one day I decided to make him mine. Oh, but more importantly, he made me his. I'm so excited to be in the house of God today. Do you just love what you feel? Do you love what you feel? Well, we've got a few announcements. You can be seated. If I can read these. I'm at the point now I need reading glasses, so we're going to see how this goes. But uh, The Secret Service Sister Reveal or Secret Sister uh, Reveal is after service. I know, right? They give me the hard stuff. Um, along with the Sunday Fun Day picnic, immediately after church. You guys doing the sister thing right after? Oh, it'll be out. Okay, all right. Also, uh, the Taco Tuesday Ladies Bible Study will be taking place this week at 6.30 Tuesday night at Sister Tara's house, which means Brother Andrew's probably free. Give him a call. The Peanut Brittle Fundraiser and Judah Fest is the 16th and 17th. Go be a part, volunteer, help out, whatever you can do um, to help raise money for the young people. Um, are you still doing the Peanut Brittle next Tuesday? Yeah, okay. Okay, they're helping out. Come help make Peanut Brittle next Tuesday. Uh, the Father's Day Brunch um, is the 18th at 11. Bring, bring your dad's. Bring your sons. If you've got a friend that has a son, bring him and his son. Whatever you've got to do, come help us celebrate fathers. If you, if you ask most, most dads in the church, they will tell you the greatest moment of pride they have is seeing their children in the house of God. That's exactly how the real father feels. He loves to see you in the house of God. Come out and celebrate and show honor to your father. Um, we also have a farewell card for Alice since she's moved to Washington. 
um, at the welcome booth. Please sign that. Send her a, a good message um, and best wishes. And now um, Sister Diana is going to come and, and talk to you a little bit about our young people. Hello again. Um, we just have a, little, a quick little a graduation for those um, kids that are moving to the next class. Do you all remember that? If you were in Saint school, if you were in school, we've all been in school. Um, when you moved up to the next grade, how proud you were, you know. Woohoo, I'm getting older. And then we get older and we're like, ooh, <laughs> we're getting older. Um, I have this book. It's called The Tutu Twins. It was my favorite book as a child. And um, I just love this book. And I remember all the pictures, and they don't make it anymore. And Grace bought it for me. My daughter Grace bought it for me about five years ago, probably off of eBay. And she just spent like $50, $60 on it because they don't make it anymore. But I look at that book, and when I used to look at that book, I was the little two-year-old. It's funny as Grace had twins after that. But <laughs> um, anyway, I was a little child in this book. But I was reading it the other day, and I'm the grandma in the book. <laughs> like, oh, my goodness. Time flies, isn't it? So anyway, I have a different perspective of that book now. But so we have kids that are going to go to the next class. So we're going to do is just a quick little graduation, and then we're going to send them to their new class. Um, so if our kids can line up the ones that are going to the next class. Um, but as they come up, let's give them a hand. They've come to Sunday school. They're learning about Jesus. There's nothing more important than learning about Jesus. We have awesome teachers that study. They work on it. They present this to them every day, um, every Sunday, and our kids are learning, and we're thankful for our teachers. Let's give our teachers a hand. Praise the Lord, church. First, we're going to start off with uh, little Rosie here. Um, they are moving from the toddler class into my class, <clears throat> the best class, just everybody knows. Um, so Rosie, I'm going to have you come over here. And Rosie is an absolute joy to have in class at all times. She always has some really cool stories to tell the whole class. And she's always has so much excitement and always is wants to be in the games and participate. And she's an awesome student. So I'm glad to have her in my class full time. Yeah. And then my next one here is Hazel. And Hazel here, she always looks out for her little sister. Uh, no matter what's going on in class, she's making sure she's got her snacks. She's got her snacks open. They're always teaming up against all the bigger kids in the class. Um, and they're quite the duo. And Hazel, she's this amazing kid, just always ready to do it. She, she talks in class. She answers the questions. And she's just, I'm excited to have her in my class as well. You guys can stand over there for me. Stand over there. Sister Diana. Now, Addie is moving out of my class, and I could not be more upset. <laughs> Addie has been an absolute sweetheart. She is my, basically my teacher's aide. She's always helping me. She has been leading the smaller kids. She listens perfectly all the time. She's always the best well-behaved in the class, and she also always knows all the questions. If there's a question, she knows the answer. 
and she can quote Bible scriptures. She's an awesome kid to have in class. And if I could, I would fight Logan for her. But unfortunately, I can't. I would win too, by the way. I love you, Addie. Olivia tried to write the speech for me, but it was 10 pages long, and I'm not sure it was all true. Um, our first one is, uh, is James Sisko, who is, is on vacation right now, but he is moving up um, to go spend time in the youth group with Brother Andrew. And, when I, and to describe James, I can say that he is a ball of energy. He, that, is, that is the best way to describe James. He is ready to move, but at the same time, Brother Jordan can tell you as well, he would do anything for you that you asked him to do. He is an excellent young man, and I'm excited to see what God does um, with his future. Next is Savannah. She is awesome in class. She listens and pays attention and remembers the things that I say and, and has conversations with me about them. She's helpful. Um, she, she does anything, again, anything that I ask, she's there and she volunteers. This is an excellent young lady. And again, I'm upset that she's going to spend time. Well, actually, don't smile. She's leaving me. <laughs> don't listen to her. Well, but she's going to spend time with Brother Andrew. I, uh, to, to follow after promise, I'm upset about this. This, this is not a good deal. But she's going to learn a lot. She's going to spend time with, with a great team, and there's only growth from here. So I'm proud of you. Here you go. It's Olivia. No, <laughs> Olivia is, 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 again, great to have in class. The biggest thing with Olivia and Brother Jordan can tell you is she gets irritated with me every Sunday. She sits over in the corner, and as, as teachers and preachers know, sometimes you find just one thing to focus on when you're, when you're teaching or speaking, and she, thank you, you hear that? The one that's listening. She used to tell me every, every Sunday, if I would look at her for too long, stop staring at me. I say, it's because you're paying attention. You're, you're understanding what I'm saying. I'm going to focus on you. She does not like that. So, Andrew, stare at her all you want. But she is an awesome, awesome young lady and, and fun to have in the class and supportive. And, and she just gets along with everybody. And she's got a great heart about her. And, and, and I, I am, I'm genuinely upset to see you go. But there is so much potential in this young lady for the kingdom of God. And I'm so excited to see what he does in her life and what Andrew and Tara can do to mold her into an adult. And I'm so thankful for my time with her. All right. We also have something we call Kids Jam, which um, they do a lot of functions. They do a lot of events and a lot of fun stuff. And Sister Keisha is Kids Jam, and she also has a class, her and Sister um, Jessica, on, on Wednesday nights. And so Sister Keisha, if she could come here, she has a couple that are also going out of Kids Jam into the youth. this year five leaving me um and just like I said last year every single kid that comes through my class and they're my own I treat them like my own um and I love them like my own oh, I can't get up here and not cry there you go yes um just an emotional person I guess I don't know um, but Olivia is the first one that can come up here and have this for me. Mm -hmm. 
she's um, she's always my helper. She's my my little mother hen. When we go places, she's always helping me keep the kids in line. Um, and she's my cheerleader because sometimes I get these bright ideas to do these little shenanigans or sign team and stick and hikes. You went on the hike with us last year. Yeah, yeah. Crazy hikes that we have to go up, up and down these ladders and all this crazy stuff. But she's always up for it, and I love her. She's great. She's a real girl. And then Savannah. I don't get to see her as much, but... I've known her since she was a little newborn baby. So I've, I've got to watch her grow up um, into a beautiful young lady. I love her like she's my own kid. <laughs> Crazy kid. And then I also have James. He's another one of my, he's, he's cheerful most of the time. And <laughs> I can always count on him when I'm back there on Wednesday nights prepping for Kids Jam. I always can count on him. Anytime he comes in, he first thing out of his mouth is, hey, Sister Keisha, or hi, Sister Keisha, or something like that. Um, so that means a lot to me. He might not think it does, but it does. Um, and then I have Alice, who's moved away to Washington. Um, and I love her. She calls me Mama B. She's really like my own. <laughs> um, she, she's something. <laughs> if you know her, she, you know she's something. Um, but I love her, and I'm going to miss her a ton. Um, and I hope to get to see her some. But and then Valdis, he's another one that's leaving me. Um, he's not here either, but he's a super big help. Anytime we have an event or anytime he's with me and we are doing something, he is always like, what can I help you with? How can I help you? Um, he's a great kid. But I just wanted to tell you the ones that are here, and if you're watching that aren't here, it doesn't matter what you go through in life. There's going to be times where there's things that happen that I'm not going to be able to help you with. Your mom's not, your dad, teachers, pastor, I'm not going to be able to help it. Like, there's things that we can't help you. But if you come to me, I will go with you, and we can take it to Jesus together. Because he can help you. All right. Keisha loves her kids. She has a burden for kids. We love you, Sister Keisha. <laughs> Um, speaking of Alice, we have a card on the back, the guest table um, back there. So make sure you sign that card. There's a card there. Just sign it. Tell her you miss her, you love her, whatever. And we're going to send her a gift because she left. Um, we weren't sure exactly when she was leaving, and she left before we got to tell her bye. <laughs> so make sure you sign that. All right. If we can all stand up. Let's just stretch a little bit. And... Um, Kids are dismissed to Sunday school. Praise the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turning to the book of Acts, chapter 16. We're going to go to verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a 
seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her whole household, she besought us, saying, If ye had judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained it. Constrained this us. <laughs> it's constrained us, as it says. Um, like I preached to you today, purple veils to prisons. Purple veils to prisons. Let's pray. Father, open our understanding, give us wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Guide us in this time, O oh God, as we uh, come to your uh, into this classroom, this time of worship, this time of learning. I pray that you will lead us, O Lord, with the Holy Ghost. We respond in kind, Lord, that the power of the Holy Ghost will be right here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We need you so much. We desire your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everyone may be seated. We were talking about Sunday school. I just want to say, welcome to class. Just wanted to say that. So we got it. But it, it, this is uh, more than class, typically. Um, I, I do a little preaching, a little teaching. Depends on how I feel led of the Holy Ghost uh, that day. And today, I think I'll be doing a little bit of both. So just stick with me a little while here. But uh, got some big things coming today, I believe. I believe God is about to pour out His Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good things. Anybody hungry for, for the Holy Ghost to move? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. You know, um, we have these picnics and things like that, and sometimes we lose our focus. We get to thinking about maybe, you know, if something's on in the back or if, if, if it's not completely done and you've got to cut this up to present it and all that. I want you to not worry about that right now, okay? We've got all afternoon. Um, I hope that your slate's pretty clean just to stick around, have some fun with this, uh, not to be in any hurry. Um, those of you that are, have uh, uh, filled your calendar with something else, uh, you know, we're sorry you're not going to be here. Um, but those of us that have have scheduled to be here for this afternoon let's just let's just enjoy ourselves but let's let's focus here for a few minutes in the presence of God let's focus here in the house of God because I believe God's got some great things to do as we read here there was a certain woman named Lydia and she was a seller of purple she was from Thyatira Thyatira was a uh, was in a in an area that we now call Turkey, uh, it was pretty close to the um, to the Sea of the Mediterranean Sea, and so therefore it uh, it had trade routes that would travel through it, and it uh, it was it was a hub, if you would. Thyatira was known for its dyeing uh, of of fabrics and and things like that but it was also known for its specialty of purple and purple being a royalty color it's deep dark rich color I can't really see it on there I was hoping that would do better than that um, but that right there is a piece of a purple fabric and, you know, we can go buy purple fabric. Anybody got purple on today? I see one young lady with purple sort of on. And, and uh, I should have wore a purple tie. Man, I dropped the ball there. Um, but purple a, is a pretty color. I, I believe purple was my favorite color as a kid. I liked purple. Our chairs are kind of purple. Um. The rich, dark colors of purple um, was, was royalty. And you know how we are. Um, 
we get a, we want to have the prestige. We want to look the part sometimes. We want to, uh, you know, we, we might buy a car that's a little more expensive than what we can afford. We might uh, go out and buy a, a very in pair of shoes or boots or something like that that might just be a little bit out of our price range, but it's worth it to us because it says something of, of who we are or, or to fit in with some maybe some of our friends or a group. Um, this is in high school, I understand, but it also, uh, we kind of do those things even as adults. Um, and so we, we kind of put ourselves into certain uh, modes, and, and you might think, I don't uh, do that. But look around at your friends and see what they're wearing and see if you don't look kind of like them. You, you just kind of blend, and you try to blend, and that's okay. Everybody say, that's okay. I mean, you're looking at a guy who hates to wear a tie, Okay. And you see me wear a tie a lot. Um, I, I kind of find them uh, sort of ridiculous, to be honest. Um, ties don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, I could even get real, I could get in a debate about, biblically about ties, possibly. But that's all silliness, right? We don't want to debate that kind of stuff. Silly. That's silliness. Everybody's silly. Silly. Um, but, but here's, here's the thing, is we, we want to be, um, well, let's, let's go from there. Purple. Purple was even in the temple. Purple was in the veil of the temple. It was a mixture of heaven, heavenly blue and earthly blood red. It was a com combination of the two that creates purple. And purple was in the veil to represent the, the humanity of Jesus Christ. So purple did have a prestige kind of feel to it. And it, the deep, dark, rich color. I mean, we've got colors everywhere, right? But back then, the color was something pretty special. And dyeing it was the only way you were going to get to it. Unless you were buying gems and... and uh, Stones and things like that that might have had color in them. Um, or you actually created your own dye to create a, a color. But apparently, to get the deep, dark, rich color of purple, you, you just about had to live in that area to be able to pick that berry or that flower or whatever that dye came from so that they could extract that. They may not have had that in certain areas. They may not have. So they would come in, and the people who would come in through the trade routes would buy the purple. So I, I say that because I believe that it was significant. This is a town called Thyatira. It is known for its ability to die and ability of, to die a dark purple. So Luke, if you'll notice, he is just beginning to say we. So in other words, somewhere along the line, he joins the group. So if, if that's the case, he's probably from this area somewhere. And so um, Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, is, is saying, we, we, and he's saying, this lady of purple, this lady who sells purple. He recognizes that not just anybody can sell purple. Not anybody can just get it right. Not, not just anybody um, is, is this wealthy. And he's saying, Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, and then he says, which worships God. Which worships God. He's setting a, he's setting a, a picture for us to see. Uh, I, I, I kind of see this, 
this room with purples laid out and or, or what do you call it not a room but a stand and and purples draped and and this uh, woman who who she's not wearing she's not wearing yellow that day she's wearing purple she sells purple and she's coming through with with her purples on and all of a sudden she's hearing them preach and 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 she's beginning to feel that tug in her heart as as the book of acts describes and so many times she feels that need and she steps out because she's a believer in God a lot of people are believers in God right but it takes a step beyond just believing it takes an action that says i believe and i surrender I, I, I don't only believe in God, I want to know about Him. I want to live for Him. I want to surrender to Him. I want to yield to His will in my life. And so, the Bible says, who worship God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Okay. I'm here, Lord. I'm willing to receive. I ask you today, have you come to church with your heart open? Have you come to hear the word of God? Have you come to worship and, and hear the testimonies and hear the encouragement of e each other's conversations? The fellowship? Have you came with your heart open or do you still have the door shut? It's uncomfortable sometimes to open ourselves up, isn't it? Sometimes we, we shut doors because what is somebody wanting from me? We shut doors because what, is, what, are, what are they looking at in me? Little Olivia was one of the, uh, of the people that we can talk about because she, she said, don't look at me. Why are you looking at me? And we all feel that way sometimes, right? We all feel like we're getting focused in on and uh I, I tell sister deanna I says Deanna, i love to preach to you because when i preach to you i look over at you and you smile you smile there are frowns there are people who don't look at me there are people who are playing on their phones there are people who have frowns i said that before didn't I? just one my very own sister frowns at and I know she doesn't, it's not that she don't like me or doesn't like what I'm speaking about. She just, she's just me, an older version, frowns. I probably learned it from her. I need to tell Diana that. But, yeah, it, open your heart door. Just a little bit today. Just a little bit today. Let the Lord have an opportunity to get in. Just come in and he, he said, come in and we'll sup together. You with me. In other words, we'll have that cup of coffee. We'll have that tea together. We'll, we'll take that, uh, that, we'll share that pizza together. We, we will, we'll have that table of cookies. We'll have that meal together. We'll sup together. Anybody, anybody desire to be that close to Jesus? Yeah, that's right. I want to be that close to Jesus. I want to have that communion with him. And that's what he wants from us. He's not looking for Pharisees. It was very clear, very clear about the Pharisee thing. He thought they were hypocrites. The, the, the outside appearance, the, but, the, but the, the vile inside, the heart full of vile. Does that not mean he doesn't want holiness on the outside? Absolutely not. What he wants is a heart that's clean, projecting love and mercy and goodness. And, and with, when you have that happening, you've got holiness on the outside. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> so she opened her heart, and what happened? She attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. She attended unto him. She agreed. She listened. She said, well, that makes sense. 
I think I'll look into this further. Opening the heart allows for the reason of God to come in. For God to have his way and something good begin to happen in your life. And what happened when she opened her heart and when she attended under the things that were spoken to her? She was baptized. She was baptized. Some say it's not necessary today. They will make it clear it's not necessary. Then why does everybody that makes a walk towards God in the book of Acts, why were every one of them baptized? Why was it when they, when they heard the word and they believed, then it says they were baptized? Why? Because it is necessary. It is what the next step is. The Bible says you must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And when you seek him, you open up your heart's door. God comes in. The reason of God enters in and talks to your heart. And you're, you go, I got to make a change. The Bible says, what's it say to do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that only saving name. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. It's a promise. So she was baptized, it says. Not just her, but because she made the, the step. And she was an influence in her community and in her home. Not just her, but her whole household. This doesn't mean her kids necessarily. It, only it could mean her husband. It could be her kids. It could be her parents. It could be her servants. It could be those who worked for her. The whole household was baptized. And she besought us saying, if you judge me faithful. I want to be judged faithful, don't you? I want to, I want to have the, the look, the exterior uh, that... That God is seeing not only on my heart but on my outside. I want God to see the good things that are happening in my life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Judge me faithful. Come into my house and abide here. I think it's a beautiful thing when, when somebody gets connected. Somebody gets connected. That, that's exactly what happened to Lydia. Lydia got connected. It's, it's an important part of, of Diana and I's ministry is try to connect people. Try to connect people to each other in the congregation. Try to connect new people to the church. Try to connect kids to Sunday school classes. It is our passion that if we have a new kid come through the door, that, that they try to find that Sunday school teacher. And that, and that classroom is... is shown to that young person before the service even starts so that 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 passion that Sunday school has teacher has can can be shared with that child and with those parents so they see it 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 is my my passion that if we have a visitor through the door that they don't that they feel like they're bombarded by people who who welcomed them here. And it's not fake. Thank you for coming. So glad you're here. And we could do AI in the back for that, right? What we want is, is live handshakes, uh, conversation with eyes, people who are excited that somebody has come. And let them know this is a place for change. This is a place for hope. Praise the Lord. And it, it, it and, and extends beyond this building. Goes out into our community. We are inviting people to come to church. We are making connection. We are reaching to hearts and lives. We're, we're looking at those people who are crying in the break room. And we take that extra minute to look, up, look them up and say, Hey, uh, I've got... 
I want to reach out to you. I want to talk to you. Um, Shelly is here today because of uh, testimony from Sister um, um, Owings um, had, had Jamie. Uh, Jamie had reached out to her and, and just started talking to her. And they'd been friends for a long time. They'd worked together for a long time. But somewhere in the conversation, she invited her to come to church to revival. And she came. And look, there's three generations here of that family now. Isn't that awesome? Three generations baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I expect great things continue to happen. Praise the Lord. Because somebody made a connection. She said, won't you abide with me? If you see me faithful. And she constrained them. You know what that word means? Compelled them. Remember that? Compelled them. She compelled them to come in. Please, please, please come, come, come. Come be in my house. I've got a room for you. Plenty to eat. I got a place for you to rest. Come into my house. Now, I want to go from that story to the next. I want you to see what happens when revival breaks out, okay? When revival breaks out in a city, what happens is it came time, it came to pass as we went to prayer. Everybody say prayer. When you have revival, when, when great things are happening, you can guarantee you there's prayer behind it. That it, not just behind it, but it's going before it. You want to see great things happen, you go to prayer. And God will do great things. See, these men had been sleeping in rooms that were beautifully decorated and comfortable and and they got up and they said, we're going to go to prayer. Prayer was at a, a synagogue in the area. So they kind of got up. They made their way to prayer. And so as they're making their way to prayer, there comes a certain damsel, a young lady who's possessed by a de demon who is following them from behind. And what's she saying? She's saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And Luke tells us that as they're going, this is being spoken. Paul doesn't know that person behind him. He doesn't know what particularly is going on. But as it continues to happen, not just that day, but the days after, the Bible says that Paul got weary of it. He got tired of hearing after many days, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. Why do you think that Paul would grow weary of that? It was the truth. Why do you think that it would bother Paul so much? Because it was a voice that the week before was saying, well, this person is going to come into a large amount of money. And this person is going to die. Oh! I feel it here. This person, she was, a, she was a soothsayer. She was out telling fortunes. And she would gather in the crowd, and those that were her handlers would go gather in the cash. And they'd take her and whisk them away into some room, and she'd begin to read their palms and tell them their fortunes. That's why we don't do that kind of stuff. Because that's not of God. And so 
They're, they're, she's reading palms and telling fortunes one week, and the next week she's walking through the streets. Basically, she's telling everybody by that spirit that's within her is proclaiming this. And it's almost like a walking billboard. I can tell you even about God's people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a voice even uh, that, that can discern what's going on in the spiritual. And Paul had enough. And he commanded that spirit to leave in Jesus' name. He said, Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. What's that tell us? Sometimes it takes more than one prayer. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of terroring and a little bit of fight. And and Satan's got a grip on people's lives that's, that's pretty tight. And some people don't want to let go, but you got to open your heart. You got to let God in and the devil out. You got to you got to make a commitment that I'm going to repent. I'm going to walk away from the things that I've gone in so far, and so it, it's it's my livelihood. It's what I do. It's 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 how I am perceived in this world. It's my persona. It's who I am. Sometimes you're going to have to peel off that layer and say, I'm God's. I'm going to walk after God's way. I'm going to follow the truth. Paul being grieved. I'm done with this. I've heard enough of this nonsense. I've had enough. And he took authority over it and commanded to leave. But the scripture tells us that their, her masters got all shook up. And they, they, were, they were really upset. And they went into the rulers. And they gathered them together. And they said, hey, these, uh, these men being Druze, do, Jews do exceedingly trouble the city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive. Neither to observe being Romans. So the, the men who were talking, we're Romans. And, and these men, they're Jews, and they're trying to fo- have us follow this one God. And Rome, we only got one God, and that's Caesar. And so we're, we're not going to, we don't want no part of that. Had nothing to do with God's. Not, not, not God Almighty versus their empty idols. It had everything to do with money. Everything to do with what was, what was commanding in their po- pockets. And what did the Bible say in verse 22? The multitude rose up against them. And the magistrates rent their clothes. Renting their clothes is, is so dramatic. It's like, let me put this down for a moment. Drama wasn't about the law. It wasn't about anything. It was about money. It was about prestige. It was about the magistrate was was people who led the country, but that that town. So they were politicians. Those other people were votes. They were money who ran the city. So it was so crucial for them to give the appearance. Oh, we're not going to do this. And it was a good chance because it's just some Jews. 
just a good time. And they rent their clothes. And they commanded them to beat them. And when they had laid hands, I'm sorry, many stripes upon them. Because they beat them. And their backs were just littered with stripes across their back. And blood and, and mess and aching and hurting. They cast them into prison. A Roman prison um, often was a pit. And within that pit, the, that's where they would often put slaves and they would tie them to a post. So they'd be, they'd be shackled to a post and their sleeping quarters were very narrow, and the, and the Roman name for it, I, I'm not even going to pretend to know how to pronounce it, uh, the, but it was, they're not even sure why it was named that, it was either because of the narrow place that they slept, or because of the pole in which they were attached, and chances are it's because of both. So they stuck them in this hole, and the Bible says that they were attached to shackles and stocks. They had bands upon their arms and feet. So you can kind of see that old, let's say, uh, where they had the, the wooden piece here and you had your hands in there and another wooden piece and your feet was through that. Kind of see that. But I also see this pole, this, this strong pole, and they're shackled to that. You know, imagine constantly being tied to something that, that you could not get out of. The, the hole would have been damp. The hole would have been dirty. Uh, the, the hole would have been cramped, obviously. And, and you don't know what might just crawl out any moment. And there would be sores. And there would be feces. And there would be urine. And they would just be disgust. And these great men of God were put in this hole. In this place. Now the one uh, that I saw online had structure above it. Uh, so there was, uh, there was foundations. There was... Uh, they would go down so there was no walls to go, uh, windows to go out of. So therefore, they, they were secured in this hole. There was guards placed there. And the Bible says in verse 24 that that uh, jailer who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and put their feet fast in stocks. So these men of God, Paul and Silas, in the darkness of night, the Bible says they begin to pray and sing praises unto God. In the darkness of night, with their hands and feet tethered, in shackles, Say they're like this. Maybe in a portion of that area. They begin to pray. You know God. I don't know why you put me here. It's horrible. Oh God. But I don't know. This just ain't right. I'm faithful to you. I guess the way they prayed. <laughs> it's not the way they're described. Silas, it's kind of dark in here, you know it. Yeah, Paul, it's kind of dark. Silas, it's kind of cold in here, don't you think? Yeah, it's kind of cold, Paul. Silas, what are we going to do about that? 
I know what we're going to do about that. We're going to start praying. Yep. How about that song, Silas? That, that song that you sing. That one I like real well. Oh, yeah. I got it, Pastor. I got it. Hallelujah. I feel it. Thank you, Jesus. You're good to me. You've done great things, Lord. Hallelujah. How about this one, Paul? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. That's Isaiah 41.10. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Oh, yeah, Silas. Sing it again, Silas. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Praying. Oh God, I know that you are the creator of all things. And you do amazing things. And this moment does not stop me from praising you. This moment, I'm chained here, Lord. I thank you for these chains. Lord, I thank you. For being in this torment. That I'm counted worthy to suffer for your namesake. That is a direct quote from many times in the scripture. They, they, they thank God that they were in the struggle that they were in. When was the last time you thanked him for what you were going through? When was the last time we looked up to heaven and said, God... I thank you. Even, even to say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I thank you. I don't know where I'm going after this, but I thank you. And the scripture says it was midnight hour, and they were praying and singing. And what happened? The prisoners heard them. That guy over there that has no hope. His whole life, he started out as a youth and started, uh, started stealing stuff and started going to, to prison and started going into slavery and started going into this and going into that. And it wasn't long till he was abused in this situation and abused in that situation. And his life was nothing. His estimation of himself was nothing. He was completely empty, devoid of life and hope. But what did he hear? What did he hear? He heard prayer and he heard praises. And that guy over there that's had, has had to walk away from everything. He got into a little deal and the deal went sour and he ended up being in debtor's prison. And here's a hard working normal guy but he is bound by his poverty. And over here is this person who, who uh, because they just got so mad, they punched the wrong person. It happened to be a Roman soldier. And he ended up, because of his anger, in shackled to a pole in a hole. Why? Why does sometimes complaining... Seem like shackles. Why does sometimes pornography grip a hold of us and doesn't let go of us? Why is that lust so burning within us for everything around us? We've got to have not just women and not just men, but, but stuff. It just burns within us. We can't control ourselves any longer. We just got to have, got to have, got to have, got to have. How about laziness? Just gave up on, on the whole idea that you work hard, you get something out of it. Just, well, you just give it, you just pass it my way. Just pass it my way, that's all I want. I'll just get whatever's given to me. How about lying? Well, it's okay to lie, just as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. No. No. God, give me honesty how about anger anybody ever get mad Caleb Luna 
14 years old, poor, he's not 14 now, he's 18 now, but when he was 14 years old, over and over and over, it was anger. It was anger of situations, anger of this and anger of that, in trouble at school, in trouble at home, in institutions about anger. But he got the Holy Ghost and he got an award at school to, this year for joy. He, reser- he, re- he received the award for joy. Selfishness. It's mine. It's mine. It can grip us hard, can't it? It can t- t- tie us up in adultery. Hopefully we're not going that. But it, it can lead you down paths that just destroy everything in your life. It can re- the biggest thing it destroys is your trust. Shackles, chains, tied up, bound. But what happened at midnight was when they sang praises and they prayed and those prisoners heard them. Wasn't the only one listening. The Bible says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosened. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a new name written down in glory. And all of a sudden his hands are waving. Free. His feet are moving. Woo! And all of a sudden that, that fell over there with no hope. It didn't just happen to Paul and Silas. But because of their power and anointing, his bands fell off. And this guy's bands fell off. Man, he wasn't angry about that. And, and this guy's bands were off. He didn't feel like he was poor anymore. He felt like he was about the richest guy in the room. Because God had broken the chains, loosened them out of their situation. Because somebody was praying and somebody was praising. Can we praise him in the house today? Woo! Everyone's bands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, seeing the prison door open. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Oh, this is awful. They're going to they're gonna string me up. They're going to quarter me. That's what they're going to do. I'm going to put one horse on each leg and on each foot, I mean, on each arm, and they're just going to separate me by running those horses in different directions. <sighs> Stuff happened. He said, no, that's not going to happen to me. Pulls out his sword. He said, it isn't. And I'm just going to end it here, right here. And a voice come out of him. Hey, don't do yourself any harm. There ain't nothing they're going to do to you that our God can't handle. There isn't anything that you're fighting today that our God can't handle. What you feel tied up in, what you feel bound up in, you think Roman law's big, yeah, nothing compared to God. You think your situation is just so drear, so dead, so, so you're, you're just about to die right here? Well, as the song said today, when he walks in the room, anything dead comes alive. God's about to do something special for someone who would raise up their hand and say, God, I have a need. God, I believe. God, I agree. Hallelujah. I need you right now to move in my situation. I need you to shake these chains and bands off of me. I need deliverance. I need hope. I'm tired of these things that bind up my life. I'm ready for deliverance. Amen. (laughs) To do thyself no harm. We're all here. And he called for a light. 
sprang in and came trembling and fell down upon Silas' feet. This is, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There wasn't no fancy preaching. There wasn't no street meeting. There wasn't a table full of purple. It wasn't something to draw everybody in. It wasn't a conversation that was intellectual and drawing out the points and lifting out some great things. But it was just somebody who saw the miraculous happen and said, What must I do to be saved? He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. All right. All right. Now, don't misunderstand. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is just the first step. Because what happened next was it said he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes and they and was baptized he and all his. Straightway. Forthwith, right away. I can't wait till morning. I can't wait till Sunday. Heaven, no. I gotta have this thing now. He might have been thinking, tomorrow I may die. I need to be saved today. But nonetheless, he said, I gotta have this. I gotta have this. And he took them and walked in the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straightway. Praise the Lord. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat before, meet before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Something awesome, huh? Whole house converted. Whole house converted. Somebody believe it. My house converted. My family converted. My mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my grandma, my grandpa, my grandchildren, my sons and daughters, my neighbors, my, those people that work for me. Yeah. Yeah. Saved. Baptized. Filled with the Holy Ghost. So the next day comes, they're expecting Paul and Silas to be in the prison, spend the night in jail, go let them boys out. So he sends a, the surgeons, which uh, is in the Greek, it, it's saying executioners, the, the guys who, who would have killed them normally, goes in. He said, but they're not there. What? Uh, they brought him to the pre keeper of the prison and said, uh, Paul said, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. And Paul said, uh, no, 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 no. No, uh, we being Romans, remember the statement, they being Jews, teaching this stuff. He said, we being Romans, because Paul and Silas were both Romans, and they had been falsely accused. And if you look up the citizenship of Rome, you are not allowed to have that accusation brought against you. And if uh, in the event you were you were to be judged properly and all those things in order and there was no order in this they just grabbed them up rent their clothes did all the display of nonsense and, and beat them and threw them in prison they said no nah, no nah, no nah, you can't do that to me i'm a roman 
And I'm telling you, you need to get in prayer. And you tell the devil, you don't do that to me. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I'm water baptized. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I am one of God's children. And you don't treat me like that. You don't put me in bands. I don't be held. I will not be held by your, by your, you, these are paper bands to me. These are paper chains. This stuff no longer holds me. Therefore, there's no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. I'm no longer bound by this nonsense. I'm free through Jesus Christ. Through his deliverance, through the grace of God, I'm walking free today. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. I refuse it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So those, uh, those big heads came down there and they released them out and asked them to leave. But you know what? They, did, they didn't leave. They said, we're not, run, we're not done, Thyatira. They went back to Lydia's house. And they encouraged Lydia and those that were in the household. And when they were done, they departed, the Bible says. But so they went from purple veils to prison and back again. You never know where you're at. You feel like you're at the end. They always said, if you're at the end of your rope, just tie a knot. Hang on. There, it, it's not time to give up. It's time to believe. It's time to realize that God doesn't put you in places that he doesn't plan to bring provision, victory, hope, and deliverance in your life. If God has allowed something to happen, there's something amazing about to happen. Maybe you've had a monstrous bad week. Well, I'm here to tell you, maybe you're just about to have a monstrous good event at this, com- at this altar. Maybe you're about to open up your heart a little bit and allow God to come in. And God to really work on some things inside of you. Will you stand with me today? Instead of the, the prison clothes or the blind man's jacket. That he cast off. He said, I'm no longer blind. Even though he couldn't see his way to the man that was calling for him. He he took off that blind man's coat. He walked up there and Jesus laid hands on him. He said, what would you you do that I, what is it that you would have me do? He said, I want to see. I want to see. And God opened his eyes. God wants to open your eyes. He wants you to put on, not not your, your pauper's. But he wants you to put on your purple. He wants you to recognize that you're one of his. And the Bible says, come boldly into the throne of grace. Not, you're not pushing God around. You're pushing the enemy around. See, you can't keep me from the, my father's house. You can't keep me from my, my blessing. You can't keep me from my provision. You can't. Keep me from my victory. Turn, turn that frown into a smile right now. Look up to heaven and say, God, I want this. As Lydia said, I gotta have that. And that prison guard said, What do I gotta do to be saved? you look up to heaven right now and say, God, I'm opening up my heart like the preacher said. Just opening up my heart a little bit, Lord, so that you can make your way in. And I do believe. Can you voice that today? Can you say, I believe. I believe. And the more you say it, the louder you get. I believe. I believe. I believe. Ah. I believe. <laughs> he that believeth and is baptized, the saint shall be saved. I'm believing God is wanting to baptize you in water and in spirit. God is wanting to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. God is wanting to do something amazing in your life right now. If you will just throw up your hands and say, I believe.
step out of that pew right now and make your way to this altar if you believe God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you're ready, you're ready. I'm ready for the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I need help. I need help. Thank you, Jesus. I need to believe I got three right here wanting the Holy Ghost have been baptized. All three of them have repented. All three of them been in Bible study. I need somebody to come back. Hallelujah. Believing God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 To the Lord be praise, glory, and honor. Hallelujah. Lord, what I do now. Lord, what I do now. What must I do to be saved? going to have to believe Jesus died for you. You're going to have to believe it. Hallelujah. That he took those chains off of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prison. The prison was changed. The prison was changed, but that's still the same change. Might have been the same hole. Might have been the same hole. Hallelujah. But something had changed. There was light. There was hope. There was renewing. There was victory. Come on. Come on. Praise him in this earth. Thank you, Jesus.
Cheers.